Today we are going to be looking at the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. When we say manifest, today we are going to be looking at the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. When we say manifestation, really what it means is the operations, the activities, the workings of the Holy Spirit. Now, the, the st- for most Christians, when they say the Holy Spirit, for some, it's just about speaking in tongues. When they get Holy Ghost baptized and they can speak in tongues, that is what others know. Some people also equate the Holy Spirit to power, which is true, really. Okay. But there are more dimensions, there are more workings and activities of the Holy Spirit, which a lot of us either know of, or don't really know how that applied to our lives. Now, there is something about this kingdom that you need to really appreciate, my brothers and sisters. The Bible says, I think in Second Peter chapter number 1, or so thereabout, it says that knowledge and peace be multiplied unto you. I mean, peace and Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So anointing, what we call anointing, is really understanding and knowledge about the things of God. But this Holy Spirit, you cannot engage him, you cannot get the best out of the Holy Spirit if you don't know how he works, if you don't know his operations. Which is why a lot of people will just stop at the place of speaking in tongues, others they will be craving for some of the gifts, not even all the gifts, and then they stop there. But there, there's more to the Holy Spirit. You've heard about the seven spirit of the Lord. We are going to explore that, but today I will share with you 12 manifestations of the Holy Spirit, 12, or 12 spirits. We've heard about the seven spirit of the Lord, but there are more to it. Are we together? Is somebody here? Shall we look at our anchor scripture for today? Second, sorry, first Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 4 to 7. First Corinthians chapter number 12, verses number 4 through to 7. Shall we go? Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Next verse. We are going up to seven. Six, seven. Oh, you want to put all of them on the screen? Yeah? Okay. Let me reach for my Bible and then we can quickly make progress. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 4 to 7. I read. Now there are diversity of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. May the Lord bless his holy reading. Amen. My emphasis is on verse 6 to 8, which says that, and there are diversities of operations. In other words, there are varieties, many operations of the Holy Spirit. But it is the same God who makes it so. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man and woman to profit without. No verse 8 and just 6 and 7. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given unto every man, every woman to profit without. To how many people? Everyone. Are we together? So you and I have access to these various manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Now, why are we dealing with this? 
Ladies and gentlemen, please understand something. If you don't know how the Holy Spirit works, there is no way you'll be able to experience the manifestations of the Spirit. It's somebody here. If you don't know how the Holy Spirit manifests, you can't have an encounter with him by way of his operations. So it is important for you to know that this Holy Spirit, as we call, he's a person. There's no doubt about that, isn't it? We know that he's a person. And by the reason that he's a person, he has multi, he's a multifaceted spirit. Different ways of operations. He gives different gifts. That is why in the body of Christ, we have prophets. We have evangelists. We have teachers. We have what? Apostles. But it is the same Holy Spirit that manifests in these various what? Ministries. The same way his ways of workings, his operations are diverse. Please, are we together here? Do we have that understanding? Now, so if we have that understanding, let's explore how this Holy Spirit manifests. When you know how he manifests, you can now engage him and say, Holy Spirit, I know you are responsible for this. Therefore, help me. Now, in this Christian journey of ours, my brothers and my sisters, your spirit may be willing to do a lot of things, but the body is what? <laughs> are we together? So, the person who quickens, who empowers, the person who makes you able to do the many things you want to do, but your flesh is preventing you, is the Holy Spirit. It's somebody getting this understanding. If you get this, your, 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 your fellowship with the Holy Spirit will be fantastic. If you get this, your prayer life will be fantastic. Are we together? So let's look at these 12 manifestations. I have limited time, but I pray that God will help us to understand. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, when you read the Bible, you come across the word Holy Ghost. Sometimes Holy Spirit is the same. There's somebody here. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Ghost is mostly used in the Old Testament, right? Then you hear the Spirit of God, or you come across the word the Spirit of God. It's the same word, Holy Spirit, not the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, please be careful. We'll come to that. The Spirit of God. You come across the Spirit of Christ. It's the same Holy Spirit. In some instances, you come across the Spirit of what? Grace. The same Holy Spirit. Now, let's see how this same Holy Spirit manifests. Number one is the Spirit of faith. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 13. The Holy Spirit manifests as the spirit of faith. It says what? We have the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Now, the spirit of faith is the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit manifesting as the spirit of faith, and he empowers you to believe everything. Did you hear that? If you want to operate in this kingdom, if you want to operate faith, you need the spirit of faith. Acts chapter number 24, verse 14. Acts chapter number 24, verse 14. The word of God says that we believe in all things. That is written and of the prophets. Believing all things. That is written. So the spirit of faith empowers you to believe all things. Are we together? If you have doubt in your spirit, if your faith is shaky, you need this spirit of faith. Believing all things. But this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy, 
so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophet. Believing all things. So for you to be able to believe what God is saying in his word, you need the spirit of faith. Please don't get it wrong. It's the same Holy Spirit. But when it comes to believing, you read your Bible, you have doubt in your heart, my brother, my sister, you have to ask Holy Spirit or the spirit of faith. I mean, empower me by the spirit of faith so I can believe all that you are saying. Now, the spirit of faith, let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse 13. Please listen carefully. We want to dissect what this spirit of faith is. It's a speaking spirit. Is what? When this spirit is working in you, you speak boldly the things which you believe. Right? So it says that we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe. So it starts from, or it stems from, number one, believing. And when you believe, you speak. So, for instance, when you hear the prophet saying, I cannot be poor, uh, it takes the spirit of faith to say that. It's somebody here. Now, let me show you from the Bible some of the people who demonstrated the spirit of faith. Do you remember those three Hebrew boys? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You remember their story? What did they tell the king? King Nebuchadnezzar, when they were brought face to face with death. Daniel chapter number 3. They told the king that, look, we are not afraid of what you are about to do to us. Notwithstanding the fiery furnace, we still believe that our God will save us. Even if he does not save us, we are ready to die for this God. Man, woman, it takes certain level of belief to say such a thing. To say I will die for God is the spirit of faith. Are we there? Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my God, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Let's look at what their response. Next two, three verse. Let's go. Now, if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the comet, flute, harp, Shadrach, blah, 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 blah. But, 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 but let's go down, let's go down, let's go down, let's go down. Ministry of burning faithfulness. And who is that God? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Can I help you some understanding? You know, when you bring this to our modern language, eh, it's like saying, Chia, you are talking to a king, young boys, teenagers. He said, Chia, we are not, we don't mind how we speak to you. We don't care what you think about us. If we die, we die. It takes the spirit of faith. Now, I have a question for you. Would you be able to speak boldly like that? And say, I can die for this God. Man, it takes something to say that. You must be standing on something. Something must have entered you to be able to say that. Now this morning, by reason of the fact that you are seated here, by reason of the fact that you are hearing my voice, I told God, Lord, empower them with the spirit of faith. And you are receiving that spirit this morning. It's somebody here. The spirit of faith. Number two. Number two manifestation. Number two. It's called the spirit of love. Second Timothy chapter number one verse seven. The spirit of love. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. 
For God, 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse 17. For God has not given us the spirit. Are we there? 2 Timothy. Oh, please check. Rather must be 1 Timothy. Eh? Did I get something wrong? Okay. Please check for me. 1 Timothy. Yes. One seventeen. For God has oh God. I missed something, eh? Forgive. Okay. It's seven rather. Second Timothy chapter number one, verse seven. Sorry. For God has not given us the spirit of what? Fear. But of what? And of what sound mind. First Timothy chapter number one verse seven. Pardon me for that. Second Timothy. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of what sound mind. Now, when you look at this scripture, what it means is that there is what a spirit of fear. That's not my concern at this stage. There is what? A spirit of power. That is not my concern. There is what? A spirit of love. Amen. The Holy Ghost manifests as the spirit of love. And what it does is that he injects the love of God into your heart. You remember, I think Romans chapter number 5 verse 5, he says, The Holy Ghost has shed abroad in our heart the love of God. Can I tell you something? How many of us love God here? Everybody will say, I love God. By reason of the fact that you are born again, you are a son and a daughter of God, by which the Holy Spirit is in you. And by that fundamental basis, you also love God, okay? But there are degrees in this love. The one that makes you love Jesus Christ, makes you love God in the highest degree is the Holy Spirit manifesting as the spirit of love. Now when you love God, you will love his word. A day will not pass by without you fellowshipping with God in his word. Then the question now becomes, if you love God, did you fellowship in his word this morning before coming to church? If you love God, you will obey God. Now, ability to love is injected to you by the Holy Spirit. If you love God, are you obeying him? My sisters and my brothers, if you love God, you will love the house of God. David said, oh, how amiable are thy tabernacles. How lovely. Ca can you say, I love the house of God. It takes the spirit of love, my brothers and my sisters. If you love God, you give to God. To advance his work on earth. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave. He gave. He gave. What are you giving to God? That shows that you love God. Did somebody here? Bible says in the last days. The, the love of many shall wax cold. Now if you say you love God and you be given to God. Why must it be that they should come and tell you Anansi stories before you give to God? We have turned our pastors and our prophets these days to people who must attach blessings to money before we give. Why? If they don't tell you when you give X amount of money, you will see a prophetic breakthrough, you will not give. Do you love God? Somebody here? If 
you love God, you will not be ashamed of his word. Today, people are ashamed of carrying Bible to church. God have mercy. Oh, pastor, my Bible is on my phone. We bless God. How often do you open the app and you claim you love God? Can I give you an assignment? Sit down and ask yourself, how many hours do I spend on Facebook? How many hours do I spend watching TikTok versus the number of minutes you spend reading your Bible? Do you love God? If you love somebody, you spend time with the person through or false. But today, our love is for social media. Our love is not for God. You and I. Let's check it. Amen. Have I lost somebody here? We are together. Or oh, I'm tricking somebody. If you love God, you will work in his house. You will do something in his house to show that this God that I don't see, I love him. But what do you do for God? When you love someone, you serve the person, isn't it? And when you, serve, when you are serving somebody, you are serving the, the, the interest what is important to the person? And do you know the number one interest of God is the salvation of souls? So you and I, that we claim we love God, when was the last time you told somebody, Jesus loves you, let's go to church? When was the last time did you pray for somebody to become born again? Do you still love God? Jesus was talking. He said, if you love me, feed my lambs or my sheep. Three, questions, three times he asked, do you love me? Do you love me? This morning God is saying, do you love me? And I have a solution for you. It takes the spirit of love. This morning, God is about to impart that spirit into your spirit man afresh. The love of God. The Holy Ghost will empower you with this spirit. Oh, you don't believe it. 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 You don't have to look at me. Just hear what the word of God is saying beyond my voice. The Holy Spirit is doing some work here this morning. It's touching somebody's heart. Yes. Number three. The Holy Ghost also manifests as the spirit of grace and supplication. Zachariah chapter number 10 verse 12. The spirit of grace and supplication. Call it the spirit of prayer. Zachariah 10, 12. Zachariah 10, 12. When Jesus Christ went on that prayer adventure with two of his disciples, right? He went a little bit yonder and was praying. When he came back, he found them what? Sleeping. And he said what? Can't you watch with me or pray with me for at least an hour? Is somebody here? There is a spirit of prayer. A lot of us desire to pray or you hear people say, I have prayed for five hours. I've prayed for four hours. And you are wondering, what at all were they saying in the prayer? What at all? Do you know you need a spirit called the spirit of grace and supplication. It's called the spirit of prayer. This spirit empowers you to pray effectual fervent prayers. 
Now listen to this. Romans chapter number 8, verse 26, the Bible says, And the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Infirmity means weakness. So everybody has a level of prayer weakness. What makes you overcome that weakness is the spirit of grace and supplication. The spirit of prayer. Is somebody here? Now all these spirits, you need to ask for it. It doesn't come by itself or by themselves. Lord, empower my prayer life by the spirit of grace and supplication. Help me to tarry in the place of prayer. It is not necessarily how long you pray that matter. So. It is not how loud you pray that matter. So this spirit does not make you pray loud. Not necessarily. There are prayer warriors who pray for two hours without quoting one scripture. Can I tell you something? Praying without planning is an exercise in futility. Uh, be, you see, God is a judge. When you are going to pray, you put your scriptures together. The things you want God to do for you, go to the word of God. What is God saying about my situation? When you are looking for a child, you go into the Bible. And the Bible says that what? No, children are what? An inheritance of God. They are inheritance of God. Okay, you go to God. Lord, this is what your word says. And you told me in your word that you bless me. Father, you can't break your word. The scriptures cannot be broken. Therefore, give me a male child. But just to go, and you sweat for two hours. God is saying, Abba, what is this my son, my daughter saying? Don't get me wrong, it's good to pray. See, there is a, pray, a place for praying loud. There's a, pray, a place for groaning in the spirit. This scripture talks about it. But the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings. Which cannot be uttered. There's a place for that. But you need to come to a place where you sit down. And converse with God. Talk to God. Open your Bible. God, this is what you are saying in your word. But it's contrary to my life. It can't be the case. Something must change. Are we together? So you realize that if, if you don't know your Bible, your prayer life will not be effective. Think about it. If you don't know your Bible. So you see, Ojasio's brothers and Ojasio's sisters, in Karakato, in Karakate, in Korokoto, in Karakat is good. But what are you saying? Based on what are you praying? Haya, 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 haya. You do haya for two hours. What is the basis for your prayer? At least in this house, every prayer topic we lift. Is based on what? Scripture. Is somebody here? So don't make this mistake of always when they, you see, there are some just your sisters and brothers uh, in the church. Anytime we lift up prayer, then they've ascended into the tenth realm with their level of tongues. I don't know whether to show off. Is it good? Is it bad? I'm not saying it's wrong. But there must be a foundation for your prayer. My brother, my sister. There's a place for loud prayers. Groanings. 
And then there is a place for what? Communion with God. One on one. But it takes the spirit of grace. It's called the spirit of prayer. To tarry in the place of prayer for hours. And it's the Holy Spirit manifesting us the spirit of prayer. That helps you to do that. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. If indeed this spirit of prayer is at work in you, you don't struggle to pray in tongues. Do you know that some of us after 10 minutes of praying in tongues, then our tongues are finished. That's what the prophet will say here. Kolo bobo, kolo bobo, is it kolo bobo or kolo bobo or whatever it is. But when this spirit comes on you, man, you may, you, you will be groaning. Praying from your heart. Pouring out your heart to God. My prayer for you and I this morning. That by the end of this series, the Holy Ghost will fill you afresh with the spirit of grace and of supplication. Oh, your prayer life will be on fire throughout the rest of this year. You will never get tired praying. Receive that grace afresh. The next spirit It's called the spirit of joy. Isaiah 61 verse 3. There's a spirit of joy. Isaiah 61 verse number 3. Let's go. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. The Holy Spirit is called the oil of joy. Do you know one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit is the oil? Right? So, this oil of joy connotes the Holy Spirit. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, joy fills your heart. When the Holy Ghost is at work in you, depression will come. Challenges will come. But you know there is an unspeakable joy in your heart so much so that those things don't bother you. Is somebody here with me? As for this, what problems are there? It depends on how you look at it. Too. They will never go away. And instead of always placing negativity on problems, see them as challenges. Is somebody here with me? Are we together? Have I lost anybody? We are together. Abby? The more you are filled with the Holy Spirit, joy fills your heart. Is somebody here? Now, I always tell people something. There are people who love to worry. Do you know that when you are worrying, it's a form of meditation? Worrying does not solve the problem. Worrying does not give you answers to your challenges. So instead of wallowing in agony, like they say in our local parlance, you put your, is it your palms or your hands between your, your what? Your ties, and then you are lamenting. Hmm? Hmm. This is my problem. 
Where will it go? This is your problem. So you personalize the problem too. Amen. Please hear this one. In these last days, challenges and problems will always be the order of the day. There is no human being that can tell you that they don't have problems or challenges. But when you see people in a joyous state, my sister, my brother, it is a joy unspeakable. When we say unspeakable, inexplainable joy. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't have money in your pocket, but you are still happy. But some people, when they don't have money, hey, what will happen? Righteousness, peace, and what? Joy in the what? Holy Ghost, not in the world. There's somebody here. So next time when you find your mind wandering, thinking, lamenting, just say, Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of joy. Let joy take over. Do you know that anytime you worry, you take steps back? But anytime you're happy, you take steps what? Oh, don't forget that. Joy leads you ahead. Worry takes you back. And a lot of the things we worry about, they are past. You can't do anything about it, my sister. So why worry? Let the Holy Ghost take over. Tell somebody, let the Holy Ghost take over. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Let's look at the next spirit. Spirit number what? Romans chapter number 1 verse 4. This is the spirit of holiness. Now, I'm going to start talking about the seven spirits of the Lord, which is found in Isaiah chapter number 11 verse 2. Right? Let's go there. The seven spirit of God. Now, this seven spirit, we've spoken about some of them during our studies last, last week. But I want you to understand it and see how it aligns with these other spirits that we've been talking about. And it says, let's go to Isaiah. I'll come back to this. Isaiah chapter number um, 11, verse 1 and 2. Give me 1 and 2, please. Verse 1 and 2. Verse 1 and 2. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The stem of Jesse refers to Jesus Christ's ancestry. Right? What is this prophet is telling us here? He spoke this several years before Jesus was born. So prophet Isaiah is telling us that when Jesus Christ comes, these seven spirits of God will rest upon him. Are we together? Now when Jesus all came, I mean when Jesus was in full ministry on earth, these seven spirits were very operational in him. Let's look at it. He said number one, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's one. The spirit of wisdom, two. And understanding, three. The spirit of counsel and might, four, five. Spirit of knowledge, six. And of the fear of the Lord. Okay? We've looked at some manifestations earlier on. Don't forget. This is part of the manifestation. But remember that these seven spirits were operational in the life of our Lord Jesus. In fact, all the other spirits. Okay? But these one were specifically mentioned that when Jesus Christ come, he will operate in full capacity. I'm going to start from the bottom. The last one, which is the fear of the Lord. There is a spirit called the spirit of the fear of God. That same spirit is called the spirit of holiness. Romans chapter number 1 verse 4. 
The spirit of the fear of God is that spirit that empowers you to revere God, not to fear God. When we say fear, fear not in the negative sense, but to have an awe, to revere God. By revering God, it means you would also obey and abide by his nature. God is holy, and he expects us to be what? Holy. But you cannot be holy by just word of mouth and by your own strength. It takes a spirit called the spirit of holiness or the spirit of the fear of God to be able to live a life of sanctification. Now the word of God tells us, it says that in the last days, iniquity shall abound. Sin will be everywhere. Sin will be enticing. That is why today somebody can wake up and say that I thought I wasn't created to be a man. I need to change myself to a woman. Iniquity shall abound. That is why today somebody can tell you that greed, G-R-E-E-D, is a smart thing. It's a lie. That is why somebody can tell you today Everybody is doing it. You can also do it. It's a lie. But for you to be able to live a holy life in these last days, it takes the spirit of holiness. Is somebody here? Now, if you are struggling with sin, man, listen to me. Romans chapter number 8, verse 13. Listen to this one. If there is an area of your life that you are struggling with, maybe sexual immorality, maybe pornography, you don't know how to deal with it. Listen, listen, listen. The Bible says, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the Holy Spirit, mortify the deeds of the flesh. Now, now, let's say you are struggling with pornography. You now, you don't know how you keep going back. After watching it, then you say, ah, this thing cry, I don't like it. My soul doesn't like it. Then tomorrow you are you, you, you go on TikTok. Then you are looking for such videos to watch. You don't know what is pushing you. The Bible says if you engage the spirit of holiness to mortify, that is put to death. So do you know what you do? You say, Father. By the spirit of holiness, put to death this craving for pornography in my life. In the name of Jesus, the Holy Spirit will surprise you. <laughs> it's somebody here. Maybe you have problem with stealing. When you go to any place, <laughs> you, you want to steal people's stuff. After stealing, then you become very bad. It's not you all. There is something that is pushing you. The Bible says, if through the Spirit you put to death, mortify the deeds, every negativity is a deed of the flesh. Every sin is a deed of the flesh. So the Bible says, by the Holy Ghost, you put that deed of the flesh to death. Can I ask you a question? What is the scripture saying? If ye, switch to New King James Version, if you, did he say if the prophet? Did he say if the pastor? But who? So you, it is you who must deal with it. <laughs> Are we together here? If by the Spirit you, 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 you put to death. This morning, I sense somebody is struggling with pornography sitting here. This is your word. Engage the Holy Ghost and say from today onwards, that appetite for pornography is dead in my life by the power of the Holy Ghost.
Do you know that social media is an addiction? Do you know that? It's an addiction. Modern day addiction. You may not see how it is still in your time, but when you finish watching Facebook or whatever it is for 30 minutes, one hour, ask yourself, can't I use that time to do some other productive stuff? All the time we all spend on social media hours, do you know what it's called? It's trivia activities. Escape activities. Someone will tell you, oh, I, I am bored. Let me go and make myself happy by watching Facebook. Facebook is not the Holy Ghost. It's joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the, not joy on TikTok. Not joy on Twitter. Not joy on Instagram. Joy in what? The Holy Ghost. If you are bored, start singing. Start singing. Huh? Too much TikTok. And somebody say, hey, Pastor, but you cry, you've been posting video on TikTok. I do. I do, pa. But I don't go and spend one hour there. And even what I post there, it inspires you, isn't it? Is somebody here? But please, on the most serious, watch it too. Social media is now the devil of the moment. But you must plan your day. Man, you can still do your social media some 15 minutes, 10 minutes, but to be wasting productive hours. Mid-morning, between 9 and 11, somebody is browsing TikTok. Whilst you are supposed to be using your brain to work. And pastor, me, I was checking meta on my, 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 in, my what, WhatsApp. These days we have meta, you know, I was asking meta question. We bless God. Are you using the information for anything productive? Last week I was telling you about how artificial intelligence has taken away our minds. Hmm? How some pastors, they, they now go and type their topics on AI and it gives them what to come and preach. Remember I told you something. AI can make life convenient for you. It will give you speed, but it will not give you direction. It will not give you guidance. It's only the Holy Ghost. Is somebody here with us? Have I lost anybody? We are together, are we? Is somebody catching something? I was telling you something last week. I have about 15 more minutes. When we are teaching about the Holy Ghost, crave for impartation. In Acts chapter number 10, verse 44, while Peter yet spake these words, Peter was preaching, and then the Holy Ghost fell on them. So as I'm preaching right now, you can receive an impartation. As the word is going forth, the spirit of faith is being pumped into somebody. As the word is going forth, the spirit of love is being shed abroad afresh into your heart. Receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter number 11, verse 2. Next spirit. Remember, we are looking at it from bottom up, right? Good. So the spirit of the fear of God is the same as what? The spirit of what? Holiness. Don't forget this. They help you to live a life of sanctification. A life of purity. A life pleasing unto God. Is somebody here? Second, the spirit of knowledge. Now, this spirit of knowledge is also called the spirit of revelation. Ephesians chapter number 1 verse 17, 18. Ephesians or Ephesians, whichever way. Chapter number one, 
verse 17 to 18. The word of God says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The spirit of knowledge is the same as the spirit of revelation. Now listen to this. This spirit of revelation or the spirit of knowledge is the Holy Ghost manifesting himself as a professor. He didn't hear that one. All knowledge belongs unto him. He knows all things. Right? But what is revelation? Revelation is seeing what God is saying. Is what seeing? Not necessarily hearing, not necessarily reading, but seeing what God is saying. Spiritual truth. Now you can hear the word being preached until you receive the spiritual implications of what is being preached. You haven't caught any revelation yet. That is why the psalmist prayed, enlighten the eyes of my understanding. How can your understanding have an eye? A lot of us, listen to this. When you open the Bible, there are so many things God has said concerning your destiny. But we can't see. In other words, we don't have a spiritual revelation of what God is saying. Understanding the truth. So what this spirit of revelation does is that he opens your eyes to see what God is telling you. Is somebody lost here? Are we together? This Bible that we read, in most instances, there is a seal covering it. A seal is anything that more or less prevents your access. A spiritual seal. That is why you don't just open the Bible and start reading. You go in prayer, Lord, as I open your word this morning, by the Holy Ghost, empower my access into the word. Enlighten the eyes of my understanding that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. That I will see things that I've never seen. Oh, goodness. The things you see sticks with you. But the things you hear, you can forget. The things you read, you can forget. But it is not possible to forget something you have seen with your naked eye. Now, seeing with your eyes means your spirit man has caught the word. There's somebody here. We live in a generation where a lot of us don't want to spend time reading our Bibles. That is why fake prophets can be deceiving us and we can't tell. That is why dangerous directions will be given. And you are still sitting there because you lack revelation of the word. But I am convinced in my mind this morning that each and every one present here today because the Holy Ghost is giving us fresh baptism, you will love the word of God. And when you open the Bible, you see things. Can I tell you something? The Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. The prophecy in the Bible can never fail. 
It is the most authentic prophecy that you can think about. But only if you ask God to open your eyes. Lord, show me what you are telling me from your word. Reveal my destiny to me from your word. Show me my next step from your word. Well, you don't need to go to even a prophet. Is somebody here? Time is getting up. Let's look at the next. Let's go back to Isaiah chapter number 11 again. Next spirit, quickly. Next spirit. The spirit of might. The spirit of might. Ephesians chapter number 3. Verse 14, 15, 16. Now, this spirit of might energizes you. It gives you strength. To keep going without getting tired. Verse 16. Eh? Paul was talking and he says, he was writing to the church in Ephesus. That the Holy Ghost will strengthen you with might in your inner man. Strengthen you with might in your inner man. Strengthen. We have some young people at age 25. 30, you walk a few kilometers and say you are tired. What have you done? You need spiritual energy. But can I tell you something? When you are going to fast, listen. When you are going to do these three days dry fasting, you need energy, spiritual energy. And the spirit of mind will strengthen you with power, strength in your inner man. That he will grant you according to the richness of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit, by the Holy Ghost, in the inner man. Isaiah chapter number 42, verse one, two, three, they're about. When the spirit of might is at work in you, you don't get tired doing the things of God. When the spirit of might is at work in you, it doesn't matter how long you engage in the things of God, you will keep doing it with joy. The spirit of might. You know, I keep telling people that because hospitals are an essential part of our lives, a lot of us grow with the understanding that everything we first of all must go to the hospital is good. But you see, this God we serve, and this Holy Spirit works 360 degrees, everything. He can even strengthen you. Your body is weak. He will strengthen you. But the challenge for us is we don't know how to engage him. We don't know on what issues must we say, Holy Ghost, help me. That is why I am unveiling this spirit. On, they all deal with specifics. So, so far, we even look at love. Agape, not filial. Amen. Is somebody here? So that is the spirit of mind. It gives you energy. It strengthens you. So next time when you are weak, don't go and take para. Talk to the Holy Ghost first. Energize me. Amen. Next spirit, Isaiah 11. It's called the spirit of counsel. This was the spirit we dealt with last week. John 16, 13. 
How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So the spirit of counsel gives you guidance, direction, shows you what you must do. Man, I'm unveiling this to you so that when you go into prayer, you say, Holy Ghost, you are the spirit of counsel. Show me what I must do. Last week I taught you one of the things, the way you engage this spirit is by asking questions. You know, David was asking God a lot of questions. Eh? Shall I go? Must I do this? Do you ask God questions, my brother? But we rather go to God with pre preconceived ideas. And you want to go to university. Maybe God wants to take you to Harvard. And you are here. Father, I have applied to Lego. Grant me admission in the name of Jesus. Meanwhile, God in your destiny book wants you to go to Harvard. Ask him questions. He will show you. This God is a human being. And in fact, the Holy Spirit. That's why earlier when I was telling you that at times you need to sit down like this before and chat with the Holy Ghost. This is what I want to do. What do you think? I am taking this step. Is this the right way to go? Somebody is asking, how do I know or how do I hear? Last week we dealt with, isn't it? But a lot of us, every time, that's why some people will come and be laughing at us and say that we are always shouting. No, there's power in the shouting. But talk to him. He is your friend, my brother. The Holy Spirit. He is in you. As you are working, you are you are talking to him. This is what I want to do. He will give you faster answer than AI. Amen. Yes. Amen. Accurate ones. Somebody is receiving fresh grace this morning. Now let's look at the final one. Let's go back to John Isaiah chapter number 11, verse 2, the final spirit. The final spirit. The spirit. Wow, we still have a couple of them. Wow, wow. Let me run them through quickly so that we, we look at the spirit of guidance. There is a spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding, which we can find from the New Testament, Ephesians chapter number 1, verse 18. By the spirit of understanding, the Holy Spirit is able to give you insight into what God wants you to do. He illuminates your mind. Now listen to this. The problems of our lives are darkness. In other words, you can equate our problems to darkness. Right? But when God gives you understanding, he illuminates your heart. And remember, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. John chapter number 1 verse 5. So when understanding comes, solution comes. That is what the spirit of understanding is. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. You know how to apply the word of God to every situation. It's called understanding. Are we together? Remember last week, one of the things you also learned that this Holy Spirit can teach you all things, isn't it? 
Because it gives you understanding even in zoology, archaeology, sociology, understanding. But you see, we, we don't engage the Holy Spirit. I was telling you last two weeks that if you are a student, for instance, before you study, ask the Holy Ghost to teach you. He will open the eyes of your heart and, no, please, don't give me NIV. Never. Well, either King James or New King James, okay? Don't go to that area. Hallelujah. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. To even know the blessings God has for you, you must have understanding. Amen. I should be wrapping up because I'll be entering into second seven soon. But let me just mention the other two spirits for you. So we have the spirit of wisdom. That spirit of wisdom empowers you to know, I mean, to apply the word of God to your life. Lot of us hear the word of God, but we can't apply them. Do you know what is wisdom as far as the Bible is concerned? Wisdom is the application of the word of God to our lives. Now I know in our local, I mean in our culture, especially here in Ghana, when an elderly person is speaking, and then he starts to infuse his speech or his statement with Proverbs, we say he's wise. As far as God is concerned, that is no wisdom. You can quote Proverbs, it doesn't mean you are wise. Wisdom, as far as God is concerned, is your ability to apply the word of God to your life. And it's the Holy Ghost called the spirit of wisdom that helps you to do that. May you receive that spirit afresh this morning. Finally, the spirit of the Lord. This spirit is also called the spirit of power. Hello, is somebody here? Are we together? The Spirit of the Lord. Now, in Acts chapter number 1, verse 8, Jesus said, And ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall receive what? Power. Ye shall receive power. Ye shall receive power. The Spirit of the Lord empowers you. It gives you power. My brother, my sister, do you know that you are powerful? Do you know that you have the power of God at work in you? Do you know that you can speak to demons and they'll run away? Do you know that you sitting there, you can cast demons? Hear this one. Jesus Christ went on a 40 days adventure. Luke chapter number 4 verse 14 and then verse 18. The Bible says, and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, this Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit that comes upon you. It is not in you. It comes upon you. Now, listen to something. It doesn't come just because you wish it comes after you have paid a price. Mm -hmm. Is somebody here? So this Jesus, he went on how many days fasting? So he went to pay the price, prayer and fasting. And when he returns, he said, Luke chapter number 4, verse 18. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach. Did you see that? 
The Spirit of the Lord. The one Isaiah spoke about in Isaiah chapter number 11. Luke chapter number 4 verse 18. Are we there? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Uh, uh, so it means that for your preaching to be impactful, you need the Spirit of the Lord. There's somebody here. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Healing, deliverance is only possible by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a dangerous thing to be walking as a Christian without knowing or as a powerless Christian. Why? Luke chapter number 24 verse 49. He says, Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Don't go and be lay hands on people if you don't have power. Don't go and be speaking to demons and say, yes, prophet does it. Let me also try it. Are you empowered? Hear this one. This spirit of the law defends you. Oh, you didn't hear that. Isaiah chapter number 58 verse 19, the word of God says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. So when you are empowered by this spirit of the Lord, when this spirit of the Lord is at work in you, he defends you. Isaiah 50, 59 verse 19, sorry, 59 verse 19. When the enemy or the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. This morning, this morning, somebody is receiving the spirit. He will defend you wherever you go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is somebody here? Have I lost somebody? I'm wrapping up now. The spirit of power is also called the spirit of dominion. Are we here? Please don't forget, we are breaking down this spirit so you can engage them with one by one. One by one. If you are not power conscious, there is no way you can manifest this power. Do you know that power is in you? Say, so ye are gods. Every god has a power, whether positive or negative. If ye are gods, why then can't you manifest this? Because we don't give it attention. Because we don't know how to engage him. But this morning I know, by these 12 spirits that we have presented, your next level is just about to be announced. You don't believe that. Shall we rise up? Shall we rise up? Shall we rise up? Shall we rise up?